So if you've been paying attention at all, you probably noticed that Mastering the Mix just released a dynamic resonance suppressor called Rezo. And that got me really excited because I am a huge fan of Oak Sound Soothe plugin, which also happens to be a dynamic resonance suppressor. So here's the thing though. Soothe costs over 200 bucks. Mastering the Mix Rezo is priced under $70. And I know a lot of people are really excited about the release of this plugin because it's way more accessible in terms of price for a lot of people. So in this video today, I'm going to go through all the features of Rezo and in my slightly biased opinion, compare it to Soothe and shoot it out on a bunch of different instruments. Now, if you're looking to expand your plugin library or just add some new tools to help with creativity, I want to let you know I have a free download for you that has my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. And these are plugins that I use all the time when I'm mixing music, so I know they sound awesome, and some of them even sound better than my paid plugins. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to check out in the description. I have a link to that free download. Go and grab your copy. I know you're going to find it super valuable. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Bobby Balo. I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without necessarily having to buy expensive gear or unnecessary, I said unnecessary, plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week and you do not want to miss that because it's going to help you level up the quality of your music. The song I'm using today is a portfolio track by Brian Hood. Uh, he's an awesome mixing and mastering engineer and producer. So if you want to check out some of the free portfolio stuff that he has, I have a link to this song and the download and where I got all that in the description. So check that out and check out all the stuff by Brian Hood because he does a lot more than just mixing. All right. Let me show you what this plugin looks like. This is Rezo. Um, they have this Nice feature. I wish every plugin did this where you can just resize it to whatever size you want and it doesn't look like total crap. Amazing. Basically, you can put Rezo on any single track or instrument that might have ringing resonant frequencies. And those can sound really harsh if you don't take care of them. Normally, when you're mixing music, you would use a notch EQ and just really grab those resonances out and just dig them out. But the problem with that is that when the resonances aren't there, you're also taking away the sound that would have been there without the resonance. The dynamic part of a resonance suppressor is really useful because it'll only take care of those annoying ringing sounds when they're occurring. And then they let everything back through. Okay, so you can think of this as like a dynamic EQ that is intelligent. So I put this on just a hi-hat track. Let's just play it and you can see what it does. When you have this plugin loaded up, basically it gives you the spectrum of what it's analyzing. So for this, is it's hi-hats. So let's start with up here at the toolbar. So we have the A and B. So that allows you to set up two different plug-in instances so you can quickly swap between the two and find which one might sound better. So that's really helpful. I love plugins that have this feature built in. This is really cool. This allows you to um, hear where the resonant frequencies are. So as you sweep around in real time, it's going to give you a little preview of what that notched frequency would sound like. So then you can really double check and find where you might have weird resonances that are building up or that are kind of whistling in the symbols, for example. And the other nice feature, I just want to mention this, is you can also activate that just by pushing control. So on your keyboard. So you can very quickly go and try to find where resonance is and then you let go of that control and then you're back into editing. Okay, so let's listen. Right, so if you think there might be something here, or here, you can hear what that sounds like, right? Triangle is listening to the delta. So this is actually going to be everything that Rezo is removing from the audio. So it's all the stuff that is going to be taken out. So this is helpful to just get an idea if you are taking out things that are annoying or if they're musical. You want to keep the musical stuff and get rid of the annoying stuff. 
Uh, this is just a bypass. It allows you to also change the input and output gain and link it. You can turn linking on and off. Another useful feature. Uh, here's some basic settings. This just allows you to tailor this to basically your own personal preferences. This is how you register. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> you guys almost got a free copy of Rezo. <laughs> And then here is support information for this product. And if you click that, it brings you right to the buy now page. All right. Now, here's one of the cool features of Rezo. Like if you can't hear any resonances, you can just push this calculate targets button. And what that does is it goes in, analyzes all the peaks from the sample that you're playing. So let's do that. And it's going to find it, find the ones that are statistically disproportionate compared to everything else, okay? So it's automatically detecting where the possible resonances are that we might want to remove. There we go. When you push that button, you get all these little red pluses. These are all the expected resonance frequencies that could be affecting the source, okay? So these are things that we're going to want to possibly remove. If you're lazy like me, you can also notice that this button went from detect targets to engage targets. So we can just click that and now all these are automatically set and enabled to start removing resonant frequencies from. So let me just hit play and you can see what happens. So up here we see the dynamic reduction of those bands. And this is where that control button comes in handy. So now we can check to see exactly what that sounds like that's being removed, right? Now we can also hear what the plugin is removing all together by pushing that delta button, okay? So let's do that. You can hear how it sounds kind of metallic-y almost. So that's, it's removing some stuff, man. And those are ringy frequencies that don't really sound that musical. So something else that we can do, if you mouse over it, you get a lot of options. You can push the power button to, to deactivate that node so it'll no longer remove these resonant frequencies. And then you can push the S, allows you to solo. And it's really hard to hear what's going on because it's not really doing a whole lot. But we can adjust the amount that we re reduce the resonant frequencies by holding, again, you click on the node, hold control, and now it locks it to that frequency and we can move it up and down and then really bite into it. So let's do that. So now let's listen to it. Kind of like a submarine sound. <laughs> now, if you want to adjust the width uh, that it's notching, you can actually just put your mouse right over this and then you turn your mouse wheel up and down. So if you look at the top now, you can see we can change between a really notch style and then a really broad peak. I'm pretty sure you should be able to scroll through with more than just two options, but right now, uh, it looks like I only have two choices, but that might be something with my mouse wheel. I submitted a support ticket for a possible bug, so we'll see if this, this gets addressed. But I, I would imagine you would be able to widen the peaks between really broad and really narrow. Something else you can do, if you hold the shift button after you click, now you can adjust the frequency without adjusting the, the amount of attenuation of that band. So that's pretty cool if you're just trying to fine tune exactly where you want to pull that resonance from. So we can just get rid of all this stuff just by going to the X and clearing that out. Let's say you don't want to do automatic detection and you want to just do it manually. All you have to do is double click anywhere on the spectrum. And then you can just move this wherever you want and it'll start pulling out the resonance frequency at that spot. So for me, what I like to do is I'll listen to hi-hats in and just sweep the frequencies using this, find the ones that's the most harsh and irritating, and then we'll add a node and just pull that out. Like that, That's that bothers me, okay? And I'm easily bothered. And you can see it's now automatically pulling out that resonance. And we can widen that band to make it go a little bit more aggressive too. So you hear it, I mean, it's really doing a lot. And I have it 
really aggressively attenuating this. So one more thing I want to point out is wherever you decide to put this node, this will intelligently detect what the bandwidth should be. So what the Q is of, of this specific node. So you see it's, it's like 0.5 right here. So if we put a node over here, look at, the, look at what the Q is. It looks like it's 13 now. We put one here, it's now 29. So it knows to how, how narrow of a notch that we want to make depending on the frequency. So that's also super helpful. So you can very quickly come in and notch out frequencies almost without having to adjust much at all. Now, additionally to all of that, they claim in the instruction manual that these are all mastering grade filters. So they should be transparent. They should be phase coherent. And the idea is that we're not going to be strangling our transients. We're going to only be removing the resonant frequencies. So I will say it does sound very transparent, right? If we go and calculate all these targets and we pull a bunch of notch frequencies out, it's actually kind of hard to hear it working. So the hi-hats do sound pretty smoothed out. I didn't say soothe, I said smooth. And I will say that this plugin does seem to find the resonances that I can hear when it's bypassed when we just had the hi-hats by themselves, right? So if I play this, I hear there's some weird ringy stuff up in this region. I'm not quite sure what it is, but when I enable this plugin, it sounds like it did find some of them but I can still hear some ringing. But that, I mean, the hi-hats are notoriously challenging for getting out all the weird ringy frequencies. I mean, that's kind of what gives them their sound. So I can't hold the plugin too accountable for that. Let's try it on some other stuff. Let's throw it on an entire drum bus. All right, let's just have it automatically calculate everything for us and we'll see how good it does automatically. All right, so let's engage all the targets and let's just see what it sounds like automatically because this also detects how much it should suppress these bands. Here we go. Man, it's barely doing anything, right? I can't really hear it. And again, I, don't, I think that's a good thing, but let's, um, let's be more aggressive with this. So here's all those ringy sounds. You can hear the kick drum has a resonance up there too. It's like a little typewriter sound. But I will say I think it does help a little bit, but we have to be really careful because we want to maintain the aggression of this track and if you don't have good control over the attack time of these resonance suppression bands, it can sometimes affect the, the abrasiveness of these drums. So I think it helps, but I would only want to use this very subtly on a drum bus, I think. Let's try it on a guitar cabinet. So with guitar cabinets, there's always a problem if you use a real amp and you have a microphone and you get a resonance frequency from the guitar cab itself. I actually used to use Soothe to kind of hone in and pull out some of that guitar cabinet resonance, but I want to see how Rezo holds up for this because I think Rezo should be a more surgical tool for specifically targeting those guitar cabinet resonances. All right, let's give this a shot. Uh, you hear it with, with the palm mutes. You can hear the uh, there's like a buildup of bass. That is the guitar cabinet resonance. So let's try to find it and then get rid of it. Right there. You can, it kind of just keeps like droning continuously. It's not like 
with the rhythm of the guitar playing, that is the that is the cabinet resonance. Okay, let's see how this does getting rid of that. Oh man, that's awesome. This is the guitar cabinet resonance that it's targeting. So let's hear what it's taking out. That is literally just that horrible rumbly crap that just sucks up all the headroom in our mixes. That is awesome. That was so easy. You saw, I mean, all I did was just sweep through and find that one spot where it was boomy as hell and then just drop a resonance node here and just pulled it out. Something you want to be careful of is not to overdo this because uh, you're going to lose all the power out of your guitar. Right? That's too much. But right there is perfect. Oh my gosh, this is an amazing tool for that. Uh, let's see what it t calculates just from maybe other resonances that we might have in the distorted guitars. Okay, here we go. So I found three. Uh, let's just hone in and see what those, those sound like. That one could be annoying. Oh, that one we definitely want. So if we want to keep what it detects, you just push the little plus sign and see if this sounds better. Let's be a little bit more aggressive here. So let's check out what it is before and after. And let's just add these other ones in there. Why the heck not? Oh, it sounds so bad. When, when you can get rid of the guitar cabinet resonance and you bring it back in, it's so noticeable. But more often than not, you'll never notice it unless you're really listening for it. This tool sounds awesome on guitars. Uh, let's try vocals. Unfortunately, this is only screaming vocals. I don't have any singing vocals, so it might be a little bit biased, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. So let's calculate the target. Like All right, so I found a whole bunch of stuff, and that, that concerns me a little bit. You know, this might just be like more tonality or, or a note that he's scream, screaming. It, we might not want to engage all these, but let's just see if it makes it sound like smoother. A dog right. So this is bypass. Uh, let's be a little bit more aggressive. Pull these down. Let the sun rise! Me, I, my blast! But the reason is it's stepping your face is for greatness! Yeah, it's working like a dog to feed myself and my bus! It's surprisingly transparent. And the cool thing about this is I don't really detect the vocals sounding lispy. And that's a huge problem when you use a de-esser or even soothe the wrong way. You'll, you'll start taking away all the sharp transients in the vocals and it starts sounding like they have a fat tongue. And it completely ruins the performance. But, I mean, I can be really aggressive with this and I don't hear that lispy, crappy de-esser sound, but right? But the reason is it's stepping your face is for greatness! Yeah, it's working like a dog! To Maybe a little bit at the most extreme settings, but not bad. Uh, let's bypass it and see how it sounds. To feed myself and my bus with the sunrise. And the reason is it's stepping your face is for greatness. Yeah, it's working like a dog. So I think it could be useful, but it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot for these screaming vocals, but they're also not super harsh sounding or ringy because they are so distorted and screamy. So let's try it on the one last thing that I'm really excited to put it on, and that is the Master Bus. Normally, I always put Oak Sound Soothe on my Master Bus. It works magic on there. If you look through my channel, you'll see there's like 100 videos of me using it because it, it's awesome. So again, me being completely biased going into this. We'll see how this stacks up against it. I hope it's competitive because this would be a really, really great alternative for a lot of people for mastering if it does 
a pretty decent job. So let's um let's clear out all these things and let's have it detect everything. So I have to play the full song. Cool. All right, so it found a bunch of stuff around 2K. Here's 3K, 4K, and 6K, which coincidentally is all the horrible frequencies in guitars in a metal song. So this could be on the right path. So let's see. Let's see what it does. So this is what it's removing. These little robot sounds. Pretty ringy. Uh, let's hear what it sounds like with and without a hand. I think it does help a little bit. Let's be a little bit more aggressive with it because I want to see what it does to the tonality if we overuse this. With it being really aggressive like this, I will say it does feel like it does help take some of the harshness away, but it also takes away some of the edge and the energy. And I'm, I really wish there was a way that we could adjust like a wet dry knob here or be able to go in mid or side and target maybe just the cymbals and leave the center vocals alone. But unfortunately, there's with this current version of the plugin, we don't have that as a feature. Um, but I think they should definitely consider that because that would make this a powerful mastering tool, in my opinion, if they had that functionality. Let's try to widen these these bands out e like crazy wide. And I, I just want to hear what it sounds like when the bands are not super nice. So now it's starting to get more musical. I will say if you want to use this in a mastering context, you're going to want to go really subtle with it. To me, it sounds like it's taking uh, some of the presence away and not, not quite the exact right harshness. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. And I think if we use the recommended cue settings that the plugin automatically generates, it probably will do a pretty good job of finding some weird resonances and pulling it out. And for pop music... I think this could also be really helpful because that's usually done with more synthesized elements uh, and those tend to be a lot more resonant based. So synthesizers and things like that can get kind of ringy and this might be a really useful tool for that. But for rock and metal, it seems to excel on guitar cabinets especially and then also vocals, it seemed like it did a pretty nice job. So which one of the instruments did Rezo sound the best on in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And if you use a deharshing plugin or a resonance suppressor that I didn't mention in this video today, also let me know in the comments. So just a really quick summary, Mastering the Mix Rezo excelled extremely well on fixing guitar cabinet resonant frequencies. And it also sounded pretty good on vocals, but I felt like it fell a little short on using it as a mastering tool on a master bus. And the reason being is we really don't have that mid side functionality that we need to just selectively de-harsh or remove resonances from maybe the sides versus the middle channel. And I also feel like it's missing a dry wet knob which should just help for a quick workflow so you can just dial in the right amount and move on. I also wish we had an ability to maybe adjust the attack time of the dynamic resonance suppression like Soothe has, but it does sound pretty transparent. And I think for the price, I think this is a no brainer. It's definitely a different tool compared to Soothe. Mastering the Mix Rezo is definitely a lot more surgical and precise when it comes to removing those resonance bands. But Soothe just has a really fast workflow and has all those other little additional features that I think make it mastering quality. 
But if you're looking for a tool just to go in and pull out some weird ringiness in cymbals or perhaps that guitar cabinet resonance problem, I really think Mastering the Mix Rezo is a perfect tool for those. And with that, I want to remind you to go and grab that download of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. I really think those are going to help you out. Thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.